Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel and good morning. Yes, a lot earlier than usual here on Ryan 118. However, we have a hell of a lot. It was an explosive Thursday night when it comes to the Celtic transfer talk side of things. We should probably get into this. What a way to start your day. If you haven't already, please make sure to hit like and subscribe. We've been waiting for some juicy information, some stories with a little bit more substance to it. We've got exactly that. Last night was a big one for Celtic transfer stories. I'm not saying there's any done deals or anything on the table, but there's certainly a little bit to talk about, so we're going to do exactly that. The ball is now rolling for the summer transfer window. If you want to stay up to date, hit those buttons below. Let's get into the news, shall we? So, as I said, we've got a little bit to cover. Last night was a big night for stories popping up about Celtic's transfer window. We have an update on a potential goalkeeper, a potential centre-back as well, and that is where we'll start. As we know, Celtic looking for their new centre-back partner for Cameron Carter-Vickers next season. And an exclusive from Stephen McGowan last night has shed some insight onto who that could potentially be. This was the headlines in the Daily Mail last night. The £8 million Bournemouth defender Chris Mepham is on Celtic's list of targets as Brendan Rodgers eyes reinforcements. It also details that he is heading into the final year of his contract and Bournemouth currently rate him at £8 million and that Celtic's interest is in its early stages. No formal approach has yet been made. Funnily enough, Chris, Chris Mepham's name has actually popped up on a couple of the forums over the last few days, but if you know me well enough, I don't really bother with the forums, I don't read into anything, kind of wait for your Stephen McGowan's, your Mark Hendry's, your Anthony Joseph's to give you a bit more insight, or go off anything that I hear from anybody reliable. Um, Stephen McGowan, as we know, is reliable and broke this exclusive last night, suggesting that Chris Mepham could be Brendan Rodgers' centre-half Target. The article went on to say that Celtic have added Bournemouth's Chris Mepham to a list of summer signing targets. Uh, the Welsh international has struggled to hold down a first team place at Bournemouth this season due to injuries, or last season I should say, and due to the form of Marco Sen Senesi and uh, Zabarnier. He's also a target for Leeds and Sheffield United from the January transfer window. Heading into the final 12 months of his contract, Mepham would now command a fee in the region of £8 million. So, Chris Mepham, a name that you might recognise from his time in the Premier League with Bournemouth, of course, as detailed in the article there, struggled to get as much game time this season, making only 10 appearances in the Premier League throughout the 2023-24 campaign. Um, valued at eight million pounds, is it a bit steep? Let's talk about him a little bit. I like Chris Mepham as a player. Any time that I've actually seen him, I've not found him too bad. I actually think he's he's decent. The big question is eight million pounds. That's a hell of a lot of money. You're obviously looking at somebody to come in and join Cameron Carter Vickers. However, funnily enough, he is a right-footed centre half. He ain't a left-footed centre half, which might be a big part of whether Celtic go for him or not. I know it's not the end of the world, some people make it a bigger deal than others about them having to be naturally good with their left foot, their right foot, wherever they're playing. As we know, right, uh, Cameron Carter-Vickers is our right-sided centre-half. But Mepham is somebody who has been playing at a, a high-quality level for the last couple of years in the Premier League. Uh, and before this season, where he struggled with injury and due to the form of others, he was a regular in that bomb of side the season prior. He was in the team basically week in, week out, uh, making over... I think just over 30 appearances in the 22-23 campaign. Um, somebody who I think that would really enhance their backline at Celtic. But when you're looking at somebody going into the last year of your contract, you've got to ask the question, is it the right thing to do to splash out uh, on, on this guy? I think the big thing with Chris Mepham is he's somebody who's got the experience maybe... 
experience or, or more experience I should say than some of the other centre halves we'll end up being linked with in this window we might get linked with a lot of unknown players who haven't played in the league as high, high a standard as the Premier League down south and he's obviously 26 years of age as well which means he's he's getting into the prime years of his career he's made it clear that he wants to leave Bournemouth this summer so that he can get first team football in these prime years of his career he doesn't want to be a number two um, behind anybody else and that's what he would be coming into Celtic to be it doesn't matter if he's not a natural left-sided defender um, at the end of the day Chris Mepham if he was to join for anything upwards of six million pounds which he's currently valued at for a transfer mark um, the fact he would probably be on quite a decent wage as well and just down to the fact that he is wanting first team football he would be starting for Celtic he would be Cameron Carter Vickers uh, partner for next season so if this is the this is the thing that I want to talk about a little bit more. The fact that Brendan Rodgers wants him, I think, is is more important here. If Brendan Rodgers makes it clear that this is the centre half he wants, then I think the club should go for it. That would be my final opinion. Um, I'm not overly fussed if there's a lot in this or not. If if Celtic are at, as we said, early stages of interest here. Celtic haven't made an official inquiry or anything like that. It's early stages of interest. But if Brendan Rodgers wants him, then get him. Because I think that this is the summer where it's very important to give Brendan Rodgers the players that he wants to build a team around. Not arsing about with making it about um, chief scouts bringing in projects. Brendan Rodgers wants ready-made, established first-team players, then go out and sign them, in my opinion. I think Chris Meppham is somebody who would come up here and be a, a good player. As I said, what I've seen of him in the past, I think he's solid. Um... So I, I don't think it would be a bad, bad idea. It all just comes down to that fee and I think that might scare off Celtic from actually pursuing it. Also capped 36 times for the Welsh national team. He's clearly a guy who is reliable uh, and good enough to play for Celtic. There's no denying that. However, we'll just need to see where it develops. Keep in mind, Stephen McGowan has not reported that this is who Celtic are going to move for in this window. He's just one of the names who are a target for Brendan Rodgers and Celtic. So if there's any update, we'll be with you on that here on the channel. However, I think the bigger story from last night and the one that needs spoke about the most is the one linking Celtic with their potential Joe Hart replacement. And if the article that came out last night is to be believed, then Celtic might already be in negotiations to sign their Joe Hart replacement. This article was published last night by Mark Hendry on Football Scotland saying that Peter Vindal Jensen interest sees Celtic locked in transfer talks over the Sparta Prague goalkeeper. The Danish stopper is high on the hoop summer transfer priorities to replace Joe Hart. The article goes on to say that Celtic are locked in negotiations, very important part here, locked in negotiations with Sparta Prague for the goalkeeper Peter Vindal Jensen. The, the 26 year old stopper is high up on the summer shortlist as they look to bring in a replacement for Joe Hart. Um, initially, uh, sorry, Jensen managed 47 appearances for the club last season, having initially been on loan from AZ Alkmaar. But Football Scotland understands Brendan Rodgers is an admirer of the player and hopes to entice him into a move to Glasgow. It's also believed by Football Scotland that Sparta are loath to lose the player after agreeing to sign him on a long-term deal upon the expiry of his loan. But Celtic are keen to negotiate with his club uh, in the coming weeks. So if Mark Hendry, usually once again one of the more reliable journalists out there, one of the ones that I listen to more, far more than others up there with with Stephen McGowan um, and having been right a number of times over the past few years throughout the kind of reports I've done on this channel, Mark Hendry saying that Celtic are actually in negotiations for the signing of Peter Vindal. Um, I think that's I, I think he's got a double barrel name. Everywhere else seems to call him Peter Vindal, but the football Scot Scotland article calling him Vindal Jensen. We'll call him Vindal for now. Um he looks good. I must admit he looks good. A bit of a tricky one here because I know a lot of you might be rushing into the comment section to tell me something about his current predicament and moving to Sparta Prague. So well, should we have a look at that? So as I said a moment ago from the Football Scotland article, he has made 47 appearances for Sparta Prague over the past season, but he's been on loan from AZ Alkmaar in Holland. However, it was a loan with an obligation to buy. So on the 1st of July, he will officially become a Sparta Prague player. His contract at AZ Alkmaar will be done. His new contract will begin with the Czech side. Doesn't matter though, 
doesn't mean he can't move on if the price is right and the transfer negotiations go well. It's not like because he's signing for somebody, it's impossible for us to get him. I've already seen some people saying, "Oh, we can't get him because he's he's moving to to uh, he's moving to to, to Sparta Prague." This isn't football manager or FIFA. There's not a waiting period before you can start negotiating with players who've just moved to a club. It's very much possible uh, for Celtic to get this done. If Celtic want him as much as this article's making out. It means that the, the cards are with Sparta Prague. They have all the power in negotiation, uh, which is also mentioned in the article. This was the, if you scroll down, you get to this part where it says that Jensen has cut has contracted a multi-year deal with the Czech Giants, and that means that Celtic would likely have to stump up a sizable fee to get their man, but they remain interested, and we understand he's one of the key targets for the club to have this summer. So, once again... Um, apparently very high on the list and as I said a moment ago with Chris Mepham if Brendan Rodgers wants him the club should go and get him also I've never seen him play so I'm not going to sit here and pretend I've said this every year look listen I'm not the guy to ask if they're good or not I do my research and I try and form an opinion of them as quickly as I can before I come on to do this video I don't know the ins and outs of the keeper himself of uh, Peter Vindal but what I do know from my research is he looks quite good Six foot four, a towering presence between the sticks he made, as we said, a lot of appearances last season, including Europa League football, Champions League football as well. Uh, a total of 47 appearances with 15 clean sheets, helping Sparta Prague become both the winners of the Czech top flight and the Czech Cup as well. They won the double. Uh, in the Czech Republic last year, um, and he was a massive part of that, the Danish keeper, he looks good, um, and I can see why he's probably one of the higher up targets out of a lot of the keepers we've spoke about, this is somebody who's maybe ticking a lot more boxes than others for Celtic, this is somebody who, number one, playing at top flight, winning trophies, winning league titles, playing in a winning team, number two, playing in Europe, playing in the Europa League, playing in the Champions League. Number three has that height. Number four, good age, 26. He's ticking a lot of boxes, whereas some of the keepers we've been linked with maybe haven't played in a winning side, maybe haven't played in Europe, maybe lack a wee bit of height. Um, this is somebody who definitely ticks a lot of the boxes and I can see why Brendan Rodgers probably wants to bring him in. Currently rated at £3 million with transfer marked. The move to Sparta Prague is going to come to a total of £3 million, which means I think that Celtic will need to pay maybe at least double this, considering he's just moved, he's on a fresh contract, which is a multi-year deal. I think that Sparta Prague, as I said, with all the cards on their side to play with, will probably demand a fee of maybe £6 £7 million, pounds maybe, um, which is to be expected in this, this current state of transfer economics. Of course, Sparta Prague made it to the last 16 of the Europa League last year where they were knocked out by Liverpool. Um, so they could have went a lot further if they managed to avoid them in the competition. And as I said, he was a he was a part of this as well. So um, I like the look of him, I must say. I, I don't think it's the be-all, end-all if Celtic managed to sign him or not. But the fact that we're apparently locked in negotiation, nego negotiations, can't get my words out of this time of night when I'm recording. Um... The fact that that's apparently the case, I think, suggests this might be the one that Celtic really, really want. And usually when we get to the point in transfer rumours where there is actually concrete negotiations going on, it it spells maybe, a, it maybe spells out a, a word or forms a picture that suggests that he could be Celtic's next keeper. So just keep an eye out. Finally, to end off today's video, we got an update on the current status of Celtic centre-half Mike Navrovsky. It was touched upon in the article uh, surrounding Chris Mepham, but this was the original tweet that came out this afternoon, as I record, so yesterday afternoon by the time it's uploaded. It was from a Polish journalist, Sebastian Stel... St oh, ho, ho, ho. This is a hard one. Let's just go with Sebastian, shall we? Sebastian said that... Um, Legia Warsaw are interested in bringing Mike Navrowski back to the club. Um, they contacted the defender, but he does not want to leave Celtic this summer. However, if there are problems playing regularly during um, the first half of the season, uh, they may come back in again in January. So, Mike Navrowski, 
you know, look, being looked at by Legia Warsaw, there has been talk of him going back there on loan for the first half of the season, he doesn't want to leave, he wants to stay here from here till January to see what his place is looking like in the side, so it looks as though Mike Navrovsky will still be a Celtic player next year, as he should be, I like him, I think he deserves more of a chance, um, but January comes calling, maybe, maybe he moves on, I don't know. Right then, that does it for this early video today. Have to get the news out there as quickly as possible. Probably could have uploaded it last night, but I'll keep it fresh for you in the morning, shall I? Um, enjoy your day. Uh, let me know your thoughts to all these rumours floating about. I like the look of Chris Mepham and Peter Vindal as well. Wouldn't mind them if they came to Celtic. Listen, it's not my money at the end of the day they're spending, so as long as they spend it well and we get the results in the park, that's what matters most. Like and subscribe. I'll see you all next time.